Hi all, let's have a look at another amazing game from the TSAC bonus match. So this was Leela ID 32329, quite a high uh, Leela ID on the 30 network against the uh, developer version of Stockfish. So this will be Stockfish 11 eventually. In this game we saw D4, C5, D5, E5, the Shek Benoni or the old Benoni as it's known. Um, this is uh, the opening book, so the end of the opening book here. Leela plays knight c3 d6. We have now e f a4, bishop e7, which does prepare potentially bishop g5. Leela seems to invite that by playing e4. We have bishop g5, so that strategic bishop exchange, otherwise that bishop might be hemmed in behind all the dark square pawns. This is quite a logical thing to do. It's been seen before, but it hasn't got that great a reputation uh, this position after knight d2 has been seen before in a game of Belyaski against Bogut in Belgrad 2018, in fact. Uh, that was a win for Belyaski uh, with um, knight f6. So that continued like this. White well, had a reasonable position from the opening anyway. Uh, but um, Stockfish innovates here with knight h6. Very interesting move because it does sometimes help repair f5. H3, this is really designed against F5. Whilst the king is in the center, F5 is a bit dangerous to play right now. If black plays F5 right now, then there's this disruptive check, and then check here, and now G6 is not possible because we will just take the knight. So say the knight, uh, or queen F7, let's say queen F7, uh, white could just take that, and after knight C4 hit D6, so this is quite forcing this whole continuation and it turns out white can blast through the center with f4 and get a good position here e eventually white gets uh, an advantage so the whole f5 is pretty committal uh, and it's not played here black just castled and it allows Leela to create a positional binds now g4 quite a lot of people like doing this against king's engine players to deprive them of one of their favorite initial moves of, of a kingside pawn storm so restricting f5 here and also kind of showing this knight might be misplaced as well and it has some rerouting to do so f6 which gives the possibility of the knight coming back to f7 later bishop d3 well immediately now knight f7 and it might have g5 tactically sometimes actually h4 uh, stops the use of the g5 square b6 a5 playing on this side of the board now, knight a6. Now here, bishop b5 trying to insert the bishop into c6, knight c7, bishop c6. But is the bishop a kind of liability in a way? It's a bit of a target, isn't it? A takes, a takes. On rook takes, rook, a, uh, rook takes a7 simply. This this is just a big, big advantage for white. There's no real compensation. So black keeps the pawn. A takes and how now unpins queen d8 f3 b5 now nifty move queen a4 b4 knight d1 knight b5 now this is has some tactical venom to it if it's left whilst white has made an effort to entrench the bishop on c6 it is actually given up here you might find that a bit surprising to spend so many moves putting a bishop there and then just to take this knight the problem is uh, rook a6 black just takes that uh, rook a5 is more subtle, knight a3, and the queen's hitting the rook here. So that's uh, very nice for black. Well, uh, it's it's getting, and also there's a threat of knight takes c2 check here. So that can't really, that's a double attack in a way. That Rook a2, black plays b3, and on c takes there's knight d4. This is very strong after h5. The pawn chain is being undermined. It's actually very, very nice. Look at black's pressure there. So there's, uh, and, and in this position, if knight takes, knight d4 is also strong. For example, this position, black gets the e5 square, again, with the idea of both c4 and h5, potentially, to undermine white's pawn chain. Uh, basically, black ends up better in these variations. So this is a good choice. Bishop takes b5, rook takes, knight c4. So the players with the knights now, rook b7, knight d e3. They seem pretty comfortable and happy at the moment. Queen e7. Uh, 
So hitting the rook, the rook goes to a6, rook b8, rook a4, g6 as though there's an interest in f5 again at some point, b3, rook b7. Uh, now here, if we test f5 in this position, rook a7, rook b7, white could take that and take here and should be fine. There's no big problem here. Uh, so that's a good advantage for white. So rook b7, uh, but now, yeah, another point of retreating the rook was to actually put a knight now on c6. So fancy maneuvering for c6, queen d7. Now king d2, you might think, well, why don't I just castle? There's a bit of a storm here on, on the horizon with h5. But it seems even in this variation, white does okay. For example, like this, uh, white ends up uh, being okay, even if black gets the h4 pawn, uh, there's d6 to counter. But it ends up, it's a small edge, likely a draw here. Uh, so we have king d2 instead, keeping the king in the center. And there's a very clever aspect to this after bishop b7, which is to play rook a7. So basically, um, sacrifice a pawn to get a huge knight on d5. So d takes here. Now the rook's holding the queen, so rook takes uh, taking uh, the queen as possible. So we have queen takes c6. So a whole pawn sack for a knight on d5. Now this is one of Chernev's themes, which I found really fantastic when I read Chernev's most instructive games of chess. He said you can, he gave this Bolzlavsky example, um, well, uh, of, of someone sacrificing a pawn, basically. I think it was Bolzlavsky to get a massive knight on d5 and the position kind of played itself. Is this the ca case here? Uh, so rook b7. Now, white's not interested in knight takes f6 check. That might actually give some counterplay. The idea is just to force the end game with queen a4. Yeah, queen a4. Just get the queens off. And you'll see here that white has this outside pass pawn. Now king g7 officially protects f6. But look at the outside pass pawn. Is this enough? Uh, so we have this huge knight on d5 and an outside pass pawn. Uh, here, if b takes c3, king takes as an example with f5 now. Again, it's not quite uh, effectual. It seems white's uh, got a great position here. For example, with rook b7 now. And this gets material. So we have knight e6. Uh, a6, f5 now anyway, h5, and actually black closes the position with f4. f takes here, there's a form pawn. Uh, king f7 as an example, uh, this is fine for white. This position is ending up with a big advantage to white. That pawn is re really a winning asset. Uh, and in that variation, if we look at king g8 instead, leaving uh, form pawn clearly uh, f takes check this position again is favoring basically white what ends up being better uh, yeah it's just better for white white ends up winning material in this line uh, as a fictional line with the threat of knight c7 it, that possible ends up winning material as this shows Okay, so there, there are there are nasty lines with uh, f takes. Uh, so we have f4 closing up there. H6 check, form pawn. Now rook c1, rook f d8, c takes, c takes. King d1, you might find this a little bit mysterious. Uh, so why king d1? It turns out uh, white's fine with rook takes anyway. If knight c5 rook b6 this position uh, is fine for white anyway as well it's a good position so king d1 b3 rook takes knight c5 rook b5 uh, b6 pardon me protecting the pawn and putting pressure on d6 g5 we have knight b4 rook e8 rook a1 rook a8 rook a5 king e8 rook a b5 so it's nice how the rooks 
a heading for that rook b8 as an option. Rook a a7, the king comes to e2. Rook a5, rook a8. Knight c6. And now comes a7. And now rook b8 check. So this is winning material now. That passed pawn is winning material in, in the main line of the game now. And really, it's just technique from here. I hold knight up. It's it's over by the shouting. Uh, even the mighty starfish can't do anything and knight down. Uh, just to show how it finished eventually. Let's have a look. So a knight up. So taking out e5 and g5, coming back for that f pawn. And here was a it was a it was a win for white. Both both sides thought it was winning for white. So it seems in particular uh the check Bononi seems to be a bad opening for Stockfish and a good opening uh for Leela. It seems to be matching Leela's uh, I would say positional strengths more. Uh what we saw in this game, the positional pawn sacrifice for an entrenched knight on d5 very much gives me fond memories of Chernov's most instructive games of chess ever played, the knight on d5 game. Uh, I think it was actually Bolzlavsky. The reason I had a bit of uncertainty there is the structure with d5 weakened is called the Bolzlavsky hole, that structure where d5 is compromised. But he was actually, I believe, with the white side. Um, which was which was interesting. Uh, so anyway, if you enjoyed this game video, and hopefully you did get some inspiration for you know positional pawn sacrifices, um, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net. Play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis in advance of these games from the improved menu. Learn from the Masters YouTube order button. Comments, questions, donations. See the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell especially really appreciate it and check out the new Teespring store in the description as well. Thanks very much.